and <clears throat> making sure everything's working right here. All right. This question comes in from a person who asks a thing. Here it is. Uh, you and your team are such a blessing and I couldn't have grown as much in my walk without, without you all. Well, that's honestly, that's a huge blessing and encouragement. I give God total credit and thanks. And I'm just excited. I get to be used as a vessel, a weak, pathetic vessel <laughs> for good things that he does. Um, you say is Hebrews one, one, a reasonable proof text for cessationism in relation to prophecy. Oh, interesting. Um, it says God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, but in these last days, he's spoken to us through Christ. Are we in the last days Paul refers to? So this is something I was hoping to go over in some detail whenever I get around to starting the Hebrew series, which I have to finish women to ministry. And then I got to focus on some, another project and then I can start that. Whether that's months away or what, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but let's give you a, a little answer to your question. So Hebrews one, one long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. This is meant in Hebrews, it seems clear, there's a contrast. There's how God did speak, and there's how God is speaking now. Now, uh, some would say that this contrast goes to show that God will not speak to us currently through prophets. This was something he did before, but when he speaks through the son, the speaking through prophets ends. Um, I don't think that's the emphasis of Hebrews. If you read the rest of the book of Hebrews, you'll constantly see this. It's not that one has ceased. It's that one has superseded the other. Um, so this is this is con consistent. The, the prophets of the Old Testament are still testifying and still speaking. And God is speaking through even, even the scriptural prophets. He's still speaking through them. But they ultimately are... Not... How do I use the right phrase here? They ultimately are God's message to prepare you for the message of Christ. So they're still valid, still relevant. They don't apply to uh, us who are believers in Jesus the same way they would have applied to an Old Testament uh, Jewish person. You know, that's, but that should be, should be seen clearly when you just read the text in context. So how is this used? Um, it's used by some to say it's cessationism is true. Therefore God no longer, the gift of prophecy has ceased and no longer is going to speak <clears throat> prophetically. So one pushback to this would be to to say, and it's, it's a bigger Bible study than I have time for today, but to say, hey, when you look at Hebrews as a whole, you don't see this idea that when the sun comes, the other thing, uh, the uh, everything else that Jesus is is superseding or, or is, is coming to fulfill falls totally silent. It just takes a back seat, right? And, and so the idea that there, if someone comes in your church and says, I have a prophecy God has given me for you, that you could say, no, God doesn't speak through prophets anymore. I and mean, it's not technically what it says, right? It, it's not technically what it's saying that it's therefore nobody will speak prophetically. That's one pushback against that is it's not technically what it says. Um, further, there's other pushbacks from examples in scripture because what the cessationist in my view and maybe I need to study this more. Uh, maybe I will when I do Hebrews 1, you know, whenever I get around to it later this year. Um, the cessationist would need to build a case that explains not just that prophecy has ceased, but when prophecy ceases. Because you have, you have churches who sit like Corinth, Ephesus, you know, who sit under apostolic teaching for years. Highlight this years with the apostle right there with you, teaching you things that are in scripture, things that you, you, I mean, obviously they would have, Paul would have talked more than the stuff you read about in his letters. So it's the stuff that you're not, you're not even reading about in the text of scripture. Paul was there able to talk to them about that. Now I'm not saying it's, it's stuff that's essential or stuff that's, that's uh, therefore uh, infallible and all that other stuff. What I'm saying is they sat under some really solid apostolic teaching for significant periods of time. And yet they still had prophecy ongoing in those churches. In Corinth, prophecy was ongoing, and he never discouraged it. Paul, in 1 Corinthians, writes to them to um, do prophecy the right way. In Romans, he gives them his knowledge of the gospel. So they have, in Romans, the knowledge of the gospel. Now, Romans is a, a, an amazing book full of, like, this detailed fullness of the gospel of Christ, right there in the book of Romans. It's amazing, right? Here, Paul writes to the church in Rome. So, so Corinth, I know I'm a little scattered today. Forgive me, I'm just overly tired. Uh, Corinth represents a church where Paul ministered for years and they sat under apostolic teaching for years and they're still prophesying. 
So Jesus has already, you know, his message has already come there and Jesus, and God's still speaking to them prophetically. Um, in addition to that, we have Romans, who's kind of the other side of the coin. They're an example of a church who did not sit under that apostolic teaching. The gospel had gone some other way, right? Other people going to Rome. But Paul writes to them in Romans of this apostolic teaching of the gospel. And so he gives them his knowledge in the gospel. And it's amazing, book of Romans. But even in Romans, he encourages them to still prophesy. So for the cessationists, they have to, usually my understanding is they have a view that the purpose of prophecy didn't just decrease, but it actually ceased, cessationist, right? It ceased when the gospel, the fullness of the gospel came. And so then you're like, well, yeah, at what point did that come? Uh, now you, you may say, well, it didn't come till revelation. It didn't come until after the final book of the Bible is written and then received by the local church. And it's like, well, that's not really clear in scripture. What I'm saying here is this verse, which I left on your screen on purpose this whole time, it suggests that if you're going to use this as a cessationist verse, the time of cessation is not revelation. The time of cessation is when God speaks to us through his son, that that's when it happens. In a sense, New Testament, Jesus beginning his ministry, John the Baptist, that's when that cessation would seem to begin, if you're basing it off Hebrews 1.1. Anyway, I, I like to give more insights in that. Um, I think what we're doing is, I think what's happening is we're misunderstanding the purpose of the Hebrews, uh, the letter of Hebrews, which is not about the spiritual gift of prophecy, but talking about how God spoke not to individual churches or individual people through a prophetic thing that God might give you, your friend for, for you or something, but how God spoke to the nation of Israel collectively through these Old Testament prophets. God is speaking collectively to his people and he's laying down the gauntlet and he's saying, hey, you know I meant it when I spoke through the prophets, but how much more do you, mu you must know I mean it when I speak through the son. You better hear him. You better listen now. Jesus is the final like gauntlet of um, receive my grace or, or, or turn it away and receive wrath. That's the purpose of Hebrews 1.1 here, I think.